Hello and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta, where as always I'm here with the latest from the tech world in the last 24 or so hours. Today we are going to kick things off with a little something from Intel who have announced something by the name of Compute Express Link. And one basically, or what we basically have here I should say, sorry, is we have another interconnect and it's going to be called CXL for short and is actually going to be aimed at putting data center level CPUs into accelerated chips. Now what makes this technology interesting, at least in my opinion, is that it's built on 5th gen PCIe, so PCIe 5.0. And this means that it can actually top out at 32 billion data transfers per second, or to put that in more common terms, up to 128 gigabytes a second using x16 lanes. Now we're going to be apparently seeing more specifications on this particular link on ComputeExpressLink.org, which of course will be linked in the description below this video, and we're going to be seeing again more specs posted there, but what we do know already is of course that transfer speed that I just mentioned, and we're going to expect it to see this in chipsets in 2020, and we're going to be seeing this in shipping products in 2021. So this is not for tomorrow or even this year obviously, it is for 2019, sorry 2020 should I say, and then 2021 in actual physical products. Now. We are not going to see this replace DDDR RAM connections at any point, or at least not any point in the future. At the moment, at least, it's aimed at accelerators, and by that I mean graphics chips, ASICs, and FPGAs. Now I do have a bit of blurb here from the CXL Consortium, which is promoting the standard, which reads, quote, CXL technology maintains memory coherency between the CPU memory space and memory on attached devices, which allows resource sharing for higher performance, reduce software stack complexity, and lower overall system cost. This permits users to simply focus on target workloads, as opposed to the redundant memory management hardware in their accelerators. CXL was designed to be an industry open standard interface for high speed communications, as accelerators are increased increasingly used to complement CPUs in support of emerging applications such as artificial intelligence and machine learning. And according to further comments from Jim Pappas, the Director of Technology Initiatives over at Intel, they are going to be, or at least aiming, to make this very, very open in terms of its specifications. In fact, his direct quote reads, quote, we want this to be the most open of open specifications. So what we're going to be seeing on that ComputerExpressLink.org is going to be the 1.0 specs, but apparently 2.0 is actually already being worked on, and they are already planning on backwards compatibility with 1.0. So obviously we have numerous pieces of technology competing in this high-speed CPU interconnect field, but this does still sound rather interesting. But that's not the only Intel thing I have for you today. We actually have something on Intel CPU shortages, which are apparently not going so hot. Now, according to a report from DigiTimes, supplies for Intel processors is actually going to get worse in the second quarter of 2019. Now, they did look at in their report, which of course will be linked in the description below this video, they covered not just DIY, which is obviously you and I, people who like to build their PC from scratch, but also OEMs and focused on the notebook manufacturer in that particular field as well. So... We are seeing demand and growth for entry-level portables such as Chromebooks based on, of course, entry-level processors and, of course, mainstream notebooks, which will most likely have i3s and things like that inside them and is quickly becoming one of the largest demographics of PC consumers in the market. Now, the issue, as you might guess, is supply and demand, the percentage of difference between demand and supply. And... Apparently, HP, Dell, and Lenovo reported supply gaps of 5% into Q3 2018, which obviously severely impacted their bottom line. And in Q4, we saw those worsen into 4 to 5%, or should I say not worsen, should I say, but remain at that pretty bad state. And a direct quote here from the report kind of gives you a little bit of a picture of 2019. And it reads, quote, in the first quarter of 2019, the Core i5 processors featuring Coffee Lake architectures are now having the worst supply shortfall. Some of the demand for Intel's entry-level Atom processors has turned to AMD, or some others have opted for Core i3 processors. So, basically, 
we saw it pretty bad, 4 to 5% in Q3 2018 and Q4 2018, and we are seeing it apparently get worse in Q1, and we're expected to continue to be pretty bad in Q2, which is uh, not exactly what you want to be hearing. But obviously it's definitely good news for Camp AMD, I'm sure they're going to be firing off the party streamers over there. And speaking of them, we actually have a very interesting user benchmark which has been spotted. So not only do we have a user benchmark results, we also have an AMD decoder. Now as you may or may not know, each engineering sample AMD processor basically has a string attached to it and the decoder basically decodes that and turns it into something that actually means something to people who don't know the super secret code. But the most important thing is here is that we are looking at a mobile Zen Plus part with this user benchmark result. It is shown to be that on the decoder, which shows that it has M, which means mobile part, and we also see two cores and four threads. We're going to see a base clock of 2.5 gigahertz and a boost of 3.4. And this, again, is going to be a Zen Plus mobile part. Now, I do just want to say before I go into the actual benchmark that this is thanks to a viewer who told us this tip. His name is Martin, so thank you very much, Martin, for sending this over to us. So what do we actually have in terms of the results? Well, the average rating according to user benchmark is 43.4%, but to actually break that down into something that actually means something, for the single core score we saw 71.3 points, or a rank of 57%, and for quad core we saw 205 points, or a score of 46.4%, and we also saw in multi-core a score of 206 points or 30.8. Now these are the mobile parts that we have seen quite a bit of talk of and are basically expected to release in April. Now this is just one user benchmark. So of course we should refrain from getting too het up either way about these results, uh, but they are just edging out of the poor category on user benchmarks. So I put them in average, I guess, is a fair way to put it. But again, this is a mobile part, so do keep that in mind. And also, again, this is only one benchmark. This by no means gives us a complete picture. So I'm definitely going to wait and see what's going on here. But this is looking to be you know, a nice little something for those who are looking for a, um, a sort of entry-ish level mobile C CPU, probably going to find its home in a lot of notebooks, that sort of thing, but it's not going to be anything to write home about if the benchmarks remain steady across what we see here. So we're going to finish things up today with a little bit of a benchmark session for the Huawei P30 Pro. Now you may recall that we actually did review the P20, and the P20 in itself did review very well pretty much across the board, primarily due to the very, very nice camera that is actually on the device. And of course it all came with a price that was not exactly cheap, but was definitely cheaper than its competitors. So obviously I think a lot of people, including myself, are interested in what the P30 and P30 Pro are going to have to offer. And what we actually have here is a Geekbench score which has surfaced for the Huawei P30. Now just to remind you guys, this is a 7nm base processor. So what do we actually see in terms of the results? Well, we see a single core score of 32.89 and a multi-core score of 98.17. Now again, this is just one result, so we should wait for more before we make any real sort of heavy assumptions or even really any real speculations, but it does appear at least that Huawei have not really made any real revision to the ARM processor designs with the P30 Pro in comparison to its predecessor, but again, this is just one result, but still interesting to see nonetheless. Anyway guys, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated. Do remember to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. It does help out a great deal, and I'll see you next time.